What's up everybody? We're taking a short break from new episodes of The Dig while we're busy harvesting, but we will be back soon with exciting new data and insights to help you improve profitability on your farm. Until then, we hope you enjoy a rerun of episode 15, Fall Banding. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on another episode of The Dig in November. Hit it, Clayton. What's up everybody and welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. We're excited to have Clayton Stufflebeam, PFR agronomist, in studio with us today to talk nutrient management and fall banding. I'm Aaron, this is Colin. I'm Clayton. Clayton, you gotta get in here and look at the camera. Come Man, there. is that right? That is right. All get right, let's here. do this. Let's, let's dig, dig in. in. Banding? What is it? Oh, oh, I know, I know. It's when you get your friends together and you form a band. Um, no. Banding is when hey, we... I know. It's like when you get married, you put a band on it. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Guys, no. Banding is when we place fertility in a strip directly underneath the row. You can do it in the spring or the fall, but the idea is to place it in the row. That's right, Colin. And with fertilizer prices skyrocketing like they are, the concept we're testing in PFR is can we be more efficient with our fertilizer by placing it in that band beneath the row and ultimately using less of it without sacrificing yields. When it comes to fertility and nutrient management, there are several things that we need to think about, like what is the best application method? And when is the best time to apply it? fall or spring. And lastly, what is the correct rate? And more importantly, can we be more efficient and more profitable using those reduced rates that I talked about? Guys, this study is just so exciting to me. Let's dig into the details. When it comes to application methods, if you're going to band, most guys opt for strip tilling. It has many benefits like you don't have to have all the tillage equipment and make all those tillage passes, therefore leading to less erosion. You can use cover crops more often and then you only have one pass with the strip till machine, therefore one band. Burn less fuel, and finally, it's more efficient. That's right, and because there's so much interest in strip till, we decided to combine the banding of fertility with strip till systems in our study. And when it comes to timing, from a fertilizer efficiency perspective, farmers prefer to do it in the spring. But the biggest holdup of spring applications is, if you could be out in the field in the spring, you'd rather be planting and not necessarily applying fertilizer. And also when we think about banding in the fall, sometimes we'll see smearing in wet soils. We also have fall versus spring banding study and have seen benefits to the spring banding. Part of that we believe is because there's a little bit of nitrogen in the fertility that we are putting on. When applied in the spring, the crop can take advantage of the additional nitrogen. So we do believe that there's a potential advantage to the spring applying if it makes sense logistically for your operation. When it comes to application rates, we have two years of data comparing banding fertility versus broadcast fertility, mainly with phosphorus and potassium. In this study, we are evaluating multiple rates, including our 100% our application rate, which is 150 pounds of potash and 150 pounds of MAP, and then reducing those rates to 75% and 50%. With those rates, we're testing multiple systems. In addition to the no-till system, we are testing conventional till broadcast, where we broadcast it in the disc grip and in the fall, field cultivate it in the spring, and then plant. And the third application method is the one that we're here to talk about today, strip till banding. Now, with strip banding, we use the same testing rates as the no-till and conventional till treatments, but we also added a 25% rate. That's right, the 25% rate is comprised of 37 and a half pounds of potash and 37 and a half pounds of MAP, which is really way too low of a rate for those systems and could be detrimental to the crop. Last year, the highest ROI across all treatments and applications was with the 25% rate that was strip till banded. With a total yield of 227 bushels to the acre, this treatment delivered an almost $36 return on investment. When we started these trials, we already had a pretty good fertility base, so we think that as time goes on, these 25% rates, we might see a little bit less ROI. We'll find out. But when it comes to our two-year data, we really have not seen a huge advantage to strip till banding fertility over the no-till broadcast, but we believe additional years of research across multiple locations are needed to draw a solid conclusion. Another reason that this will be such a long-term study is that we are in a corn and soybean rotation. So the plot moves and alternates each year. With that, 2022 
will actually be our third year of this study, but only our second year on the same plot. Our long-term goal is to continue doing the same treatments in the same plots, rotating corn and soybeans, and see if we can manage fertility more efficiently and maybe apply less when strip-till banding. This is a weird episode for the dig because typically we like to come at you with proven data for things that we could recommend for you to try or consider on your farm. But with this study, we don't have concrete data or recommendations to share with you yet. However, we wanted you to know that we see the rising input costs, we hear your concerns, and we are dedicated to testing these theories to help you be more profitable for years to come. Colin's right. We're very dedicated to doing this research. However, it's hard even for us to test nutrient management in PFR. These studies take a lot of time and a lot of different pieces of equipment. It's a highly intensive study to do accurately, but we are dedicated to conducting this type of testing for farmers to help them be more profitable. On farm level, testing is difficult, and there are so many variables that can impact nutrients and how they are managed. But I'm excited for the opportunity to continue expanding our PFR studies and conduct this research in field scale environments this fall with growers in my area. This project actually started in the fall of 2021 with 24 acres of trial work in East Central Illinois and 12 acres in North Central Illinois. Essentially, we are testing three fertilizer rates and then comparing each of those broadcast versus banded. We are increasing the scope of this project this fall. I will be traveling in Illinois with a four row strip till machine utilizing Yetter Maverick shanks and a 56 series Valmar bulk tank provided by Salford Group and Finnig Equipment out of Ohio. We will also have the ability to apply anhydrous ammonia with this machine to continue that research as well. Wrapping this machine up, we will utilize ag leader components to have the ability to utilize prescriptions, change rates quickly, and be able to have data records from year to year. Through this research, we are hoping to answer many questions. Coulter versus shank, spring versus fall, broadcast versus banded. How about rate efficiency? Other dry products that might be on the market price. Cover crop work, maybe extending that a little bit. What to do for the bean year? What about 15 inch soybeans following those fertilizer strips? Those are just a few questions we intend to answer through this. Strip till as a whole is a whole management process and there's no silver bullet to it. It's awesome, Clayton. We're excited to see the results of that. Well, everyone, that's it for this episode of The Dig. That's it? We're done? That's it, Already? Son. Yep, that's it. Tune in next time as we take a deep dive into some of our 2022 learning projects. Also, make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode of The, the Dig. Dig. I should have had a little more. Yeah, we should have moved our belts a little more.